Another important component of discussing chemical kinetics is to discuss catalysts and inhibitors. These are both another factor that's going to influence rate. We talked about catalysts, but we didn't really address inhibitors when we discussed it before. Now, we had defined before a catalyst as being something that increases the rate of a reaction, and it's going to do so without getting consumed. So remember in our mechanisms, it showed up as something that we added in one step and it got reformed in a later step, so it did not get consumed. Now, what the catalyst does is it actually provides a new mechanism by which our reaction can occur. The new mechanism has lower activation energy, which allows it to occur faster as seen to the right. So here we've got the reaction of ozone with oxygen producing 2O2. So O3 plus O producing 2O2. This original reaction, so uncatalyzed, it's a single step mechanism. Now, if we were to add a catalyst, and so there's a couple of catalysts we can add. One example would be to add a chlorine catalyst. So we add that chlorine, what would happen is the chlorine atom would interact with the O3. It's going to produce a ClO and O2. The ClO would then react with an oxygen to produce chlorine and oxygen. Now our overall equation is the same. Ultimately, it's the ozone and the oxygen that are changing and we're producing oxygen molecules. But the presence of that chlorine changes the mechanism. We go from a single step mechanism to a two step mechanism. The reactants are the same, so they're going to start the same energy, and the products are the same, so they're going to end at the same energy. The difference is, is that this new mechanism has lower activation energies. Even though there's two steps, it's still lower activation energy. So ozone, making up our ozone layer can interact with oxygen atoms, um, but it's not a particularly conducive reaction. It's a very slow rate. The presence of chlorine, which can come from pollutants, chlorine atoms can come from pollutants, can catalyze that reaction, can cause the ozone to break down and form oxygen molecules. So again, the catalyst provides a new pathway by which our reaction can occur. The new pathway has lower activation energy, so it happens more quickly. Now, inhibitor does the opposite. It decreases the rate of a reaction without getting consumed. It appears exactly the same in a mechanism. It gets added in one step and reformed in another. The difference is that it raises the activation energy. So the inhibitor, just like the catalyst, provides a new mechanism. The new mechanism has higher activation energy, causing the rate to slow down. So we would use an inhibitor if we had a particularly dangerous reaction rate that we wanted to slow down, or we would use that inhibitor if, say, we wanted to prevent something from decomposing very rapidly. We would store it with an inhibitor, and that way it would slow that rate down. So we're asked finally, what is the purpose of a catalyst and how does it achieve that purpose? So again, the purpose of the catalyst is to speed up the reaction rate. And it speeds up that rate 
by giving a new pathway for our reaction to occur. And that new pathway has lower activation energy.